Hi, I'm Jenny Allen, and I get the opportunity to have a discussion about discipleship with Mary Moeller and Jannie Ortland. It's so good to be here with you all today. Thank, Thank you. you. It's good to be, to be with, with you. you and yeah. Mary. Yes, absolutely. Well, tell me just a little bit about yourselves. Okay, my name is Mary Moeller, as you said. My husband's Al Moeller. He's the president of Southern Seminary in Louisville, where we've served for about almost 20 years now. And I have the privilege of directing the Seminary Wives Institute, which mm. is a program for student wives. So I've been honored to see hundreds of sweet student wives come our way through our program, and discipleship is a part of that program. And so it's one of my favorite things to talk about. Mm. And I'm Jannie Ortland, wife of Ray Ortland, pastor of Emmanuel Church in Nashville, yes. Tennessee. Mother yeah, yeah. to four, grandmother to almost eight. Wow. And I've been discipling women through the discipling ministry of my mother-in-law. Started with me when wow. I was 25. I've been discipling women since then. So one of the things we've been talking about before we got started was the definition of discipleship and how that varies a little bit from mentoring. What what would you all define discipleship being, yeah, as being? Don Whitney's on our faculty. He's written some wonderful things about discipleship. And I like what he says. Uh, that he says, when Jesus said to make disciples, the disciples understood that to mean that they should make out of others what Jesus had made out of them. Mm -hmm. So that can that can cover a whole range of things. Yeah. Um, yes. And so I love that that's kind of an umbrella to start from. Yes, it starts with Jesus, doesn't it? It Mary? does. You have to know Jesus because he's what you want to give mm. and he's who you want to receive. Mm. And so you learned this from your mother-in-law. Tell us a little oh, bit. Oh, it was so fabulous. She has been discipling throughout her whole life. She believes it's very biblical. Mm. And uh, I asked her to disciple me long distance. One, one time when she came, she brought all her notes and worked through it with me. And she's just helped me through the years. So I, I can always go to her with a question. Um, the way she and I both do it is we ask six to seven women to join us for a year's commitment. And we lay out before they come what the commitment will involve, the time, the effort, and we ask if they're married to get their husbands okay, mm -hmm. and then we start meeting for a year. Wow. And so what do you think the need is? When they're coming in that room and they say yes, what is the need for this in our lives? I mean, I think sometimes we get pushed to community group with our husbands and, and Bible study, and all of this is really good, but this is different. Yes. What is the need here that's being met? One of the things I think of with discipleship primarily is, you know, the Great Commission is all about making disciples, and sometimes we get hung up on the, the, I mean, it's the wonderful thing when people come to faith and repentance in Christ, but then we just kind of throw them out there, give them a Bible and say, you know, go love Jesus and figure it out, and for new Christians, they need somebody to sit down with them, most of the time one-on-one, -on -one and show them this is how you study your Bible, this is a way that you can do this, this is how you get into these habits of daily uh, prayer and, and scripture memory, just all the other litany of things that, that some of us who grew up with this know all about, and, and, and these new believers that are hungry, we just need to be intentional about following up with them and discipling them, and sometimes that's the very basic part of discipleship. Mm -hmm. You see lots of fruit yes. falling from the trees in those situations yes. usually. Yes, yes, so much. It reminds me of what Peter said in Second Peter chapter 1, everything pertaining to life and godliness. <laughs> and that covers and a lot. And this, you know, pertains to godliness. Sometimes if you have an, a woman who maybe is a little older in the faith who understands how to study her Bible, but maybe it's just a little bit lonely mm -hmm. um, and she just wants some woman to yeah. walk through life with her for a while yeah. to help her to be able to talk with and I think I think as a person um, a little bit younger than you all not too much Quite but a, a little bit I think we all are longing for that I think yes. our generation is it has somehow missed um, the idea of the older generation pouring into us n not completely but Largely, too. Yes. and I think it is so comforting when I get to be around that. I go to a really young church, and it's all fiery, but an older woman started coming, and we went to coffee, and it just filled my soul. So yes. I think to encourage these older women to be brave, and even if they don't feel like they have tons to offer. Well, I think we're afraid to disciple because we don't want to ask someone, oh, would you let me be your discipler? Yeah. It sounds arrogant, right? but if we look at it through Scripture's eyes, it's obedience. Mm -hmm. And as Mary said, we're just passing on what Jesus has given us. Yeah. So I found it helpful in my own life to be a disciple first, mm -hmm. to have Mom Mortland and then a, a spiritual mother, Carolyn Roper in Idaho, has helped me as well. They've given me things that I can pass on. And in our 
in our small groups, Mary, yours is a little different with student wives. Right. Um, as a pastor's wife, my goal with the ladies I meet with is our two, intimacy and accountability. Mm -hmm. And we go after that with each other for a year where we go really deep with the Lord and yeah. each other. Yeah. And so what does that structure look like? Just real practically in my for those group, wanting to start it. In my group, I write a, a letter to the women who have either indicated interest or I, I, I feel an interest toward and I say in June, in September, I'm going to be starting a group and I would love to have you be a part of it. This is what the group would entail and this would be the commitment. You'd need to spend two extra hours a week plus your quiet times. You'd need to have your husband's okay. We meet on these nights for this amount of time. Would you consider it? And I leave it in their court. If I get a response back from them, I go after them. And we start in August, we meet 30 times. Okay. During our meetings, we yeah. go through um, Bible study, although it is not mostly a Bible study, but they have to be doing Bible study. Worship, corporate worship as a group, accountability. Are they doing their assignments? Are they meeting with the Lord? Are they in prayer? We teach on those things, sharing and then prayer time together. Those five elements we try to work into each night that we meet together. Mm, so rich. You know, I was just going to interject, if I yeah. could, that I think there are some women who could be so instrumental in the lives of young believers, but sometimes they feel like they're not equipped. Like, they think you have to be a super Christian to be a discipler, which yeah. is not at all the case. And mm -hmm. we were talking earlier about how there's even some young moms who say, well, my priorities are this right now. I just don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's unwise to just file that away until your kids are grown. But mm. you can you can double task. You can be creative. You can have a college, uh, a young woman who's in college that you're discipling, and she just goes on errands with you. And yeah, she's yeah. in the car, and she's seeing how you're interacting as a mom, so she's, she's witnessing that part of your life. Yeah. And in between the interruptions, you're talking about stuff. I mean, you're, it's, discipleship's a lot of face-to-face. -face. Life I think Don life. Whitney said this, too. It's like talking about things that matter. Mm -hmm. You know, getting past the fluff and the silly stuff and really getting to the heart of some issues mm -hmm. that you need to mm -hmm. talk about. But it takes being intentional. And it I does. think that's yes. what both of you have have done. Um, and I know that you all would credit the Lord for that and right. the spirit Absolutely. that has enabled you to do that. And mm -hmm. I... I think also there are so many women listening that are just afraid and whether they're afraid to ask an older woman to give mm -hmm. up some time for them or mm -hmm. whether they're afraid to ask a younger woman because they don't think they right. are ready to do that. Right. And I think um, there's just loves so much that, value. by the way. I know. Yes. He does. Fear not. Yeah. Fear not. We're made for relationship. Yeah. That's why Jesus commanded us, go and make disciples. Yeah. Yeah. There is a woman out there for whoever is watching this who needs yeah. To be discipled and to be a discipler. Yes. We all need it. So be available if you're that th th going to be the older woman, and if that means you're 30 and you're the older woman sometimes. Just yes. be available. And then if you're the one that's seeking discipleship, just be intentional. The person's not going to come and knock on your door. Right. You're going to have to go, and, and if the first person turns you down, then you keep asking. <laughs> yeah, and you, good. you know, and it may be, we were talking about some people just need discipleship in the area of marriage. They're just, mm -hmm. they don't have a biblical marriage to look to in their parents as an example and they see a marriage that just seems to work so well and it seems to be godly and reflects Christ's love for the church. And, and they're just looking for that person to just not, yeah. not yes, discuss to intimate secrets, hope. but just talk to them. How do you do yeah. that? What's it look like? Yeah. Well, thank you all. Thanks for thank joining you. me today. This You're is welcome. Great. Our pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.